Steve Wozniak is with us today, as I said, live and exclusively. Thanks. It's good to see you again. Yeah, nice to be here. You are uh, still an Apple employee. You are employee number one. You're still employed by the company. You're still an Apple shareholder. What do you make of what's been going on in the stock lately and how closely do you watch it? I do not watch it at all, period. I've never used Apple stock app once. I don't want to live that life of day trading and always being concerned this is up, this is down, because I have a philosophy of happiness which is smiles minus frowns, and you're <laughs> always frowning if you're kind of worried about how something's going to turn out, be it you know, be it stock or elections or a company's progress. Um, I, I mean, Apple is obviously doing extremely well. They were the first company to pass a trillion. I don't know if they're first or second largest company in the world right now. Um, maybe the stock's down. I don't know, because you're asking the question. And, but I don't care. You know what? I never did anything to um, for the value of stock and the value of a company and the value of money. I never did it. Um, you know, it was an accident. I did it to create great computers for the world, and I wanted to get to get out there and reach people. And you have to reach them through a company. When when people suggest, and there are some who do suggest, that the company's best days are behind it, or the stock's best days are behind it, from a growth standpoint. What do you say to that? I've heard it before, <laughs> forever and ever almost. <laughs> um, I, I just, I, I, that's, no, the important thing is that you sit down and you say, what can I be constructive? What can I do that's good today? There are always a lot of projects going on inside of Apple. I'm not close to the operations, but a lot of projects going on, you know, that uh, will have big significance in the future. Um, I mean, what are you afraid of? Like the company's going to die or something? They said that one time too, and very wrong. You have, to, you have to judge the company largely based upon its resources. And when they're as great as they are, it's kind of like IBM a long, long time ago. They had so many resources from going back to the 1401 days that they, uh, a company like that just can't fade away even when it gets broken up. It takes a long, long time. So Apple will be around, a big major player for, uh, and technology is just booming right now. New, new devices, new ideas. Uh, you're kind of the ultimate innovator, uh, obviously, given the fact that you founded the company along with Steve Jobs. Uh, to the question of innovation, is Apple innovating enough now, you think, beyond the iPhone? Well, people look at a product as an innovation, and they say, oh my gosh, all these other companies are coming out with other products, and each one has a different look and a style and, and an operating system. Wait a minute, what kind of innovation is that? Buy a Samsung phone. I used to do it. I love playing with other products and seeing what they do. You could say, smile, and it would take a picture a second later. Well, that's a fun feature, but features aren't innovation. Real innovation is what changes our life. Apple was the first of the phone companies to put Touch ID. Let's look at real things in life. Touch ID, so you didn't have to type passwords. Every other phone company had to come along and copy Apple. Apple was the first one to come up with an easy to pay system. Don't even turn your phone on, don't unlock it, don't find an app, don't type in a credit card number pin. Just hold your phone over the device and put your finger on to identify yourself. Every other company now had to find easy ways to pay with their phone because you always have your phone with us. Those are major ways of innovation that affect everything we do all the time in life. Hard to believe it's been seven years since Steve passed. What do you think he would think about the company today? Um, you know, it's hard to know a different person. I try not to get into people's personal lives and their thoughts. Um, in my discussions with Steve Jobs, even when I met him, we're discussing you know, philosophies of the world and how it works and what's right and wrong. Um, I believe that he would be very happy with the company today and it's concerned more with end users and putting people above technology. Steve always acted that way. Um, that the users, the users are more important than the technology itself. You should not be a victim of the technology and what it can do. You should get to live your human life the most human way possible. And Apple was the first one to have like a smart assistant called Siri, where you could just talk a thought that you had in your head. You didn't have to memorize a structured sequence of you know, operations to take and memorization. That's what we got the world away from, become a human. What do you think of the job that Tim Cook has done? I admire very, very much. Um, when, when Steve Jobs died, a lot of people said, oh, Tim Cook could never possibly be a Steve Jobs. No, I think he has excelled. He's obviously kept Apple's um, products good enough that the public likes them and buys them. Um, and he's also had a very close attention to employees and customers to their personals. And don't worry about other people that are different. It's like uh, absolutely, um, you know, a fairness, a fairness type of thinking. And I like that very much. Concerned about human rights. What are the, what are the technology products of the future that most excite you, that you would love to see Apple come out with next? It's, you know, you've had the phone, you've had wearables. <laughs> what, what's on the horizon? What is a big thinker like you think about when it well, comes to technology. When you're, you're talking about a company like Apple, it's such a huge company, you've got to be talking about something that is very, very major eventually in our lives in, in terms of, of, you know, dollars and wealth. A car? 
and a car car makes the most sense and apple was supposedly working on a car now supposedly working on the driving technology and and i do not believe in um auto driving cars cars that will drive themselves without a steering wheel and for there was a time when i thought apple's going to be the company that makes it and it's going to be so incredible to buy a car with no steering wheel i don't really believe it's quite possible yet and the reason is is that roads are built by humans and humans are not perfect not as good as nature and mathematics and even evolution so i mean uh, humans make mistakes all over so i believe that assistive driving cars that spot red lights and stop signs and avoid some of the accidents today are the way to go, but not to uh, lose sight of the fact you're not going to get to a car that drives itself. Well, I mean, obvious segue of, from what you're saying here is Tesla, which you still own a Tesla? Yeah, but Tesla has no, no, um, no autopilot. They call it beta. Wait, I'm sorry. What car company puts out a feature and calls it beta? That doesn't count. Tesla um, makes so many mistakes. It really convinced me that, that autopiloting and auto steering car driving itself is not going to happen. It's going to be. It can help you in certain ways, but boy, you are. Uh, you're almost more subject in a Tesla these days to being aware and watching the road than you used to. Because if you lapse, that's when those accidents happen to kill people. You bought a Tesla because you were hopeful that they were going to push further into autonomous driving. You are correct. I felt that it was. I want to be a part of this lead into autonomous driving. I want to be a part of that crowd. And I believed it, and I kept upgrading my Tesla to one that would have a camera and radar, and then one that would have eight cameras and radar, because the first one would never do it. And then I gave up, and I said, it's really not going to happen. You said a really interesting thing that, that I, I read. I wanted to read uh, for our viewers and have you react to it. And this is about Elon Musk. You said, quote, I've just been fed too many hopeful wishes and lies about the future, and I've given up on Tesla and Elon Musk, believing anything they say. That's pretty, that's pretty harsh. I don't like it when I feel duped. However, I do speak around the world um, regularly about the fact that, okay, I spoke to the, the Chevy Bolt EV engineers before that car came out. And it's my favorite car to drive around town, not on road trips because they haven't solved the road trips. Only Tesla owns the world. For five years, they've negotiated the contracts to have basically gas stations. But I point out that, uh, that I asked them, are you going to use the Tesla superchargers? And the, Bolte, the Chevy engineer said, no, we just build the electric car. We leave charging to other people. Wait a minute. Elon Musk had the foresight to see that you don't want to make sacrifices. You want a car that can take you anywhere you desire to go today. And that includes, that includes a lot of things. It includes the cars, the major component of it, the batteries, and the charging. But you stopped believing in some of the big things that he has either said or, or promised. Are you a shareholder did, in Tesla I, or no? I'm not a shareholder. But you, I don't you, buy stocks. You still do own a car, own one of the, one of the vehicles. I, I own a Tesla and I like it. It's a very good car. There are things that I like, a lot of things feature-wise that I like about the Chevy Bolt EV better, but Tesla owns the world for any long distance driving. I love to take long drives anywhere I want to go. And in the United States, you'll find that the superchargers for the other types of cars, the BMWs, the Chevys, the VWs, they're all in cities, but not between cities. And the United States is so stretched out, you got to have chargers between cities. If I get an idea in my head, I'd love to drive to Kansas today. I, know, I have absolutely no fear. I could do by any number of routes and, and uh, Tesla's there. Was there a time where you wish that Apple would have bought Tesla? And do you still think something like that could be possible? If you do believe that Apple needs to make a, a bigger move into a new and big area like a vehicle? Yeah, but I'm not a businessman per se, but there was a time that I felt I would desire for Apple to buy Tesla because Tesla was making the real statement towards electric cars. And now it's catching on like fire around the world with other car companies, with countries and, uh, you know, oil pricing going down. I think that's a result of things Tesla started five years ago. Let me ask you another uh, issue that's been very timely within the, the tech press, and that is obviously privacy and data. Um, Tim Cook himself has been critical of some of the other companies that, that have had lapses, uh, as have you, uh, specifically regarding Zuckerberg and Facebook, uh, to which you call it an ethical lapse. Do you think that they have a handle on this issue today? I'm not sure what you mean by have a handle on it. Do you think they understand? They, I think they have the ability to correct it, but that they won't do one thing that'll cost them a penny. Why, You're talking you, about Facebook. Yeah, I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen one step. I've seen Zuckerberg talk about. We'll do this. We'll make this open. We'll give you a little bit more options. I haven't seen them do one real thing. I mean, I could think of a lot of ideas of things they could do that would please me as somebody who believes in you know human rights and protecting and privacy and safety, but um, they haven't done one of them. What should they do? Well, one thing they should do is um, allow. If, if you're going to be on targeted advertising lists, give you an option to pay your way out of it. Or at least say, I'm on these lists, tell you what lists you're on, 
Which categories do they put you in out of their thousands of categories? And you can che uncheck, check and uncheck them, or you can say, I don't want to be on any, any uh, targeted list at all. And they should not keep that sort of data just from every little post. If I like something, <clears throat> if you post something and I like it, I'm trying to say to you, I'm passing a message to you, I like what you posted. I'm kind of being a friend to you. I'm not thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really giving that like to advertisers so they can put me on lists. Um, no, I think that also they should open Facebook up to competition so that f people like Facebook because it's the best. No, there's no way to, to have competition. They should have a, a markup f form, a standard file form that can be exported to a new social web startup that will carry along all your friends and your timeline and everything that's in Facebook, including your friends. And you can post to your friends on Facebook, come over to this new site and we'll instantly be friends again. It'll work the same. And then Facebook would have to compete. They'll never do that. You were critical of his appearance before Congress uh, back in the spring. I just got sick of him. You said, uh, again, something I read, no firm answers, no promises, no real ideas on how to correct things. I get sick of all executives when I hear some sort of standard, blah, 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 you know, kind of diverting around any real answers and issues and, and uh, any, even any real promises and uh, real action that would help people. No, I'm always for the end consumer, the little guy over the big, um, the big strong power, wealthy, you know, company or person. What about regulation? Do you think that's the answer? I think regulation it might be called for. A lot of people say regulation um, inhibits innovation. Wait a minute. Look at, the, look at the first 10 amendments to our Constitution. Each one of them is, you could call it a regulation, but they say Congress will not do these bad things. That's how they're written. Congress will not do certain things that are bad. Regulation means a company will not do bad things. It doesn't stop a company from doing good things. Just as certain things are considered bad by society. Might even be um, uh, net neutrality, for example. And, and no, that's that's... That's good protection that we who have less power than those that own the companies have. You, so you don't believe that self-regulation is in order? And it's, you know, look, it's an interesting question given your pedigree. Um, not wanting well, the government to, huh. to be uh, overly involved in what you're doing. You're, you're essentially saying that they should not be able to self-regulate, that the government well, needs to take a bigger role in these companies, you, the you way can, they operate. You, you can, of course, you can always get into, you know, monopoly power and antitrust, but um, Apple is self-regulated, and they don't, they don't violate your privacy. They give you what you think is private is private, whether it's payments or communication with other people. And Zuckerberg says, well, Apple can afford to because they charge so much. Apple charges $2 a month for iCloud. Wait a minute, so Facebook could do it for $1, $1 a month and say, we aren't, li we aren't paying attention to any of your posts at all. You know, uh, or let me sign up and choose which lists I want to be on because I like I like advertisements about this product or that product or another product. Let me choose. Don't you choose for me? And it, and if I have to say I don't want any targeted advertising, charge me a buck a month for it. Let me ask you lastly before I, I let you go. You're receiving an award in the room behind me, and I know you don't want to be late for that, and they don't want you to be uh, late either. What do you think of social media in general? Are you a fan of it? Oh, I think social media is a good thing that serves a good purpose. Even Facebook. Great idea when Zuckerberg was in the dorm. This is going to get people together and they'll be able to communicate ideas that are important to them. It wasn't, he didn't sit down and say, how can we come up with something that later on we'll be able to trick everybody and, and make a ton of money advertising what their, what their desires and wants are. Oh, no, no, I think social media has a good part. It's not right for me. In other words, it's good, for, it's good for some people, most people, but for me it's not because it doesn't work well for me. I'm A, a little bit of a quiet, shy guy. Well, and you do second, have a Twitter handle, I noticed. I have a Twitter handle, but I never read Twitter. I never go in and actually participate on it, except to share my location, something I started a long time ago with an app that was called Foursquare then, so my wife would be able to see where I am. <laughs> and somehow I just kept doing it out of habit. We stick to our habits better. I'll tell you one thing, the social networks become so habit for me. I used, about last year, about a year ago, I used Facebook for the first time, even though I had a, a Facebook handle and sometimes answered people's inquiries where they saw me post where I was. I, I only used it for three, three months. I would be standing in a line at an airport and I'd start scrolling through. Look at all these posts, all these funny dog ones. I'll send them on. And, I, and, I, had, and I, I saw some of my good friends were in there. And, you know, and then I thought, it's habit for me. And I don't like addictions. And I don't like things that are habit for me. And I said, wait a minute. If I've got solitaire, I don't need Facebook. So I gave up mm -hmm. my account. But I didn't say it's bad for other people. It's just, it's just it's not good for me. It's not the right thing for me. I gave it up. Haven't missed it. Have felt only good since. And yeah, I've missed some nice, you know, good, fun animal and people and animal helping animal type videos. I miss that. I could go find it somewhere. Understood. We appreciate uh, your time today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Steve Wozniak. Uh, again, one of the Apple co-founders uh, spending some time with us exclusively on CNBC.